Hello Govs! Welcome to part two of the P-Link tutorial on the personal account and tools section of the platform. We are going to jump right back into our personal menu by once again clicking on our account at the top right hand corner, so either your picture or your initial in the circle, and your personal menu is going to slide out from the side. Now we've already gone through how to update your account and profile information, how to pull your event pass is available on a separate video, and then we've gone through the event history, memberships, and experiences that flow into your involvement transcript in part one of this tutorial. So now we're going to finish up by going through the last little pieces here. The next one is submissions. So under submissions, this is where you're going to track forms that you have completed through the P-Link system. P-Link is a great platform that lets campus departments and organizations host online forms for capturing all kinds of information from our students. So this could be anything from you signing up for an opportunity, providing um, information to student organizations that you're a member of, to surveys from different campus departments, all sorts of things. Typically, when you're asked to fill out one of these forms, you're either going to receive a direct link to the form or you're going to be given instructions on how to navigate the p-link page to get to it. This section is actually what happens after you've started that form and um, you need to know how to get back into it once you've started or submitted it. And so you're going to see Again, we've got the forms lit up, the forms tab lit up under my submissions. Here's a list of the forms right here. So it gives you the title of the form, it gives you your status, the status date, the date completed, and some actions. The important thing to know is that the status will tell you where you're at with the form. So one thing that is frequently um, a source of frustration for our students is that forms on P-Link require you to click a final submit button after you have answered the last question and that's why this is important to know. Many times students will think they've completed the form and they just click off the site and they never click that final submit button and then the host of the form is saying I never received it and they're saying yes I did it. This is how you see what happened. You go here you find the form and you look at your status. If you did not click that final submit button it's going to say in progress. So in progress is a form that you started but did not complete. Notice it does not have a complete date. From here, you've got some actions you can take. You can delete it. Let's say you just accidentally clicked that link too many times and you didn't need to. You can delete the um, duplicate or you can open it back up by clicking on that blue eyeball to go back to the form and finish it. You'll notice that you do get a warning right away. Your submission is incomplete. Resume the process where you left off. To get back into it, you click the blue link down here and that takes you back to where you were at in the form. Now if I just click back to get back to the submissions, if you have clicked that final submit button, then you're going to have either a pending, approved, denied, or received as your, as your status, but most importantly, you're going to have a date completed. So that's going to be your kind of proof of, yes, I did click that submit button. Pending simply means that it's gone to the host of the form and it's waiting for their review and approval. You'll notice that over here, your actions have gone down to being able to open it to see it which you can only see your answers. You cannot edit them at this point. You can print this. So if you need this information, let's say you need to copy and paste some answers because you need to do multiple forms for the same thing and you want to use similar language, you can do that. Or you can print it off, but you cannot delete it. Your form, once approved, will say approved right here. If it's been denied by the host, it will say denied. And the third option is simply received. So based on how the form is set up, it may be something that doesn't actually get approved or denied, but is just simply marked as received. So your status is gonna give you that information. And then again, the little blue eyeball opens it back up. The print button, of course, prints it. And if it's in progress, you can delete it. Going back into our personal account. The next thing is notifications. So in the first tutorial, we talked about notifications under our account as something that we could adjust how we want to receive the notifications. There was a box for system and there was a box for email. If the box for system is left checked, this is where the notifications are going to come in. So notice that it is a lot of clicking to get to them. They don't pop up immediately on that home page. You have to actively go into your personal menu and go to notifications to then see them. And then from here, you have to click on them to actually read what that notification is. 
And so we do recommend that you leave your email notifications on because at least you'll get that email and you'll that will be your little hint to like, oh, go in and check P-Link, something has happened versus having to go in and reading your notifications all the time. You can also empty your inbox at any time to um, empty that section out if you end up getting a lot of them. Downloads is typically for our officers of student organizations and our campus lead um, for department pages. This would be if we were running reports as I do as the campus administrator and I needed to download that report. So our general campus users don't need to worry about the downloads. But the last section that's surprising, surprisingly very important is the sign out button. This is where you find the sign out button. If you are using a campus computer in the library, in one of our student centers, etc., that's a shared computer and you go on P-Link, please make sure that you sign out before you leave that computer. That way the next student walking up um, doesn't have access to your personal pages and your information. And again, that's simply by going into your personal menu and clicking sign out at the very bottom there.